Hello everybody, welcome to a video lecture on sets and maps. In this video we're going to be looking at uh, how and when to use hash set, linked hash set and tree set, three set classes. Also we're going to be comparing the performance of sets and lists, which of them are better to use in one or other situations. The next thing we're going to be looking at is uh, to tell the differences between collection and map uh, interfaces and describe when and how to use hash map, linked hash map, and or tree map to store values associated with keys. And lastly, we're going to be looking at how to obtain singleton sets, lists and maps, and unmodifiable sets, lists and maps using the static methods in the collections class. At the end of the video lecture, I'm going to uh, talk about the homework uh, for this uh, video lecture. All right, let's see how hash sets work. Uh, sets, you may be familiar with sets from high school. Uh, they are usually associated with Venn diagrams. On the right side, you can see three sets, R, S, and T. Remember that sets contain only unique elements. Uh, we don't see any duplicate elements in R. Also, we don't see any duplicates el duplicate elements in S and in T. But some of the elements are also uh, are in many sets uh, at the same time. For example, D, it's like in uh, both R and S contain D, both T and R contain G, and so on and so forth. We call these elements as uh, they are located in the intersection of R and T. All right, so let's create three, these three sets R, S, and T. So these hash sets are going to be. Uh, sets that contain characters. Uh, hash sets are generic types, that's why we need to specify the class new hash set. Now let's uh, repeat this line for S and T. So since we're going we are adding uh, characters, uh, I think it would be nice if we just uh, Uh, include all the elements of these uh, sets in a string a b c d e d e f g this is the content of the set a a set r sorry this is as a string it's going to contain elements like d e f j k m n and the third set t is going to contain the elements g e f j h i now we're going to add these elements into these hash sets by using a loop. So we're going to say for each character uh, C in R string, we're going to do R dot add this character C. Of course, we can't use this string here. We need to convert it to char array like this. Okay, this loop is going to add all the elements into R. Now let's add all the elements into S, but from S string, also from T string. And the S string are going to go to set S, and this is going to go to set T. All right, so our sets are ready. Um, the, first, uh, the first method we're going to test of hash sets is going to be two string. So all the sets are printable by default because they implement the toString method. When we print them, this it's going to print its contents. All right. So these this is the contents of the first set. This is the second set, and this this is the third set. And you can see that for the first set, the order of the elements is preserved: A, B, C, D, E, F, G. For the second element, it's also preserved, but for the third element, it's not preserved. Why? Because uh, sets uh, intrinsically inside they don't uh, like store the order in which you added the elements. Since sets uh, in Java they use hash functions, uh, that's why the order is not preserved. You can uh, uh, you can um, look uh, in the internet on why the uh, the elements in sets order is not preserved. Alright, so let's go on. 
so the contents of the set we can see. Now let's try to add um, some repeating elements into the set R. So we know that the set R contains these elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we're going to repeat adding the character A and then print this set again. And we can see that the elements uh, that are being duplicated are ignored. So if even if we repeat these elements, uh, this element many many times, it's not going to be added and this line of code is going to be ignored. And this is very useful. So set before adding just checks if this element is already in set or not. So we know uh, like uh, two methods now, add and to string. There is one more method called clear. We can remove uh, all the elements on inside a set using this clear method. And we will see that R is going to be cleared and after that it's not going to contain any elements. There is also a method called contains. Uh, which just sh checks if the, the, the certain element contains in set. For example, does set A contain, I mean, does set R contain the letter A, or does set R contain the letter Z? There is A, but there is no Z. Okay, so that's going to be true and false. There is also a method called is empty, R that is empty. It, it gives us true because R contains some elements, but when we clear all the elements in R, is empty is going to be giving us true because there are no elements inside. All right. So also uh, there is a method called iterator that returns the iterator uh, for this set. We can use the iterator to iterate over the elements in the set and uh, do some operations with them. For example, we can create iterator for character, which is going to take the value of the R iterator, and we need to give the name, let's say iter. And we know uh, iterators from R last week. We can write iter dot uh, has next, while it has next, we're just going to say system out print ln iter dot next. And this loop is going to print all the contents of this um, of this set. All right, so we can see all the set here. The next method is remove. We can remove the elements from this set by calling the remove method. For example, let's remove the letter A and then we're going to print this set again. And the second time we print, it's not going to contain the letter A. Let's try to remove the letter A again to see if it raises an exception. If we're trying to remove a duplicate element, I mean, uh, remove non-existing element. In this case, it's just going to ignore. The last method, uh, uh, the last method uh, that we're going to see. Uh, for operating with sets is error size. So we can see the size of the set by calling the size method. Okay, there are seven elements in the set. All right, actually size wasn't the last method. There are uh, a couple of more methods I want to talk about to you. Uh, so there are some basic set operations like union, intersection, and difference. For example, uh, the union of R and S is going to be all elements containing in both uh, these sets. For example, R contains A, B, C, D, E, F, G, S contains D, E, F, G, K, M, N, but R union S is going to be A, B, C, G, D, E, F, J, K, M, N. And no elements are going to be repeating. You can We can do these uh, operations using methods. For example, so uh, we're going to create a, an empty hash set. An empty hash set. Uh, union new hash set. And we want to put all the elements uh, from R and S into this union. What are the ways to do so? 
So before doing this, let's check the documentation. So if we look at documentation, there are four constructors for hash sets. And these are the methods we just uh, looked at. And uh, we're going to be looking for, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the methods uh, listed in here. So we can use the clone method uh, and do something like this. So we can do not an empty hash set, but we can do r.clone. But well, rclone returns an object, that's why we need to cast it into hash set of characters like this. Alright, so now union contains all the elements from R, but they are different objects. If we change union, it's not going to affect R in any way. So let's check it. We're going to print R, we're going to print the union, and then we're going to add some element into R, and then we're going to print the union R and union again. So we're going to see that first R and union are the same, then we change R, but the union stays the same. That's, that's the thing we want. Now, the union, uh, the method uh, for uh, union is add all. So we're going to see union dot add all. And here we're going to say S. So it's basically saying add all elements into R that are also in S. In, this is going to give us the union of both of the sets. Now let's print uh, union. And we can see that it contains all elements in both of the sets. But we can also find the union of all these three sets, R, S, and T. We just need to call add all again for T. And uh, this set here, the union, is gonna, it con contains all the elements in all of these three sets. So add all method is right here. So it's uh, a method in, in the interface set. You can see that it returns boolean. So it returns bo true if the set is changed the result as a result of the call. So you can also use this boolean for more control over the add all method. Now let's look at the intersection. So in the same way we're gonna create a set and call it intersection and let's find the intersection between R and T. And so visually we can see that the, the, the elements G, E, F are intersection uh, are located in the intersection of R and T. So we're going to clone R and we're going to say intersection dot retain all. This is the method that works as, uh, as intersection. Retain all that are in T. Now let's print the intersection. And we can see that the intersection now contains E, F, G, these three elements. How to find the intersection between all these three sets? So in this case we're going to do intersection dot retain all from S and now this uh, intersection is going to contain all elements that are in the intersection of all these three sets. Now um, the next set operation is difference. Uh, let's do the difference. So difference uh, in order to difference, we're going to say remove all. And here we're going to write, let's say, S. And what does it mean? Basically, it's saying remove all elements from R that are in S. It's like R minus S. So it's going to give us A, B, C, G. It's like R minus S in, in, uh, in sets. All right, so we have seen uh, three uh, three operations with sets. There is also a method called contains all, which checks if a certain set is a subset of other set. So let's say we're going to create a set that contains only B and C. 
B and C. And also we're going to check a second constructor of the hash sets. So you can create the hash set from some collection. Let's say that the elements are located in an array list. We're going to put these B and C into an array list. Array list of characters and this is going to be some uh, set. Uh, call it new array list and we're going to say set dot add uh, B and we're going to repeat the line and we're going to add C. Basically now B and B, C are uh, contained in one set and this set is a subset of the set R. Now let's create the hash set from this array list and let's move this line down. It's going to be... Uh, let's actually uh, set uh, 2. Call it set 2 and this is going to be new hash set from set. Okay, so it automatically is going to take all the elements from here and convert them into set. Now let's print set 2. It should contain B and C. Now let's repeat some lines. Uh, so array lists contain, can, can, can contain duplicate elements. What happens if we add these uh, elements into a hash set? We can see that the elements are not repeated. Now let's see if this set is a is subset of R. In order to see that, we're going to say R uh, R dot contains all, and we're going to say here set two. Basically, in other words, it sounds like does R contain all the elements from set two, or is set two subset of R? It should be true. All right, and B C are not contained in T. So T contains all set 2 should give us false. All right, very good. And the last method I want to show you guys is to array. You can convert any any set into an array. And this method is located down below, the array. All right. So this is a method that returns an array of objects converts your set into an array, a normal array, but uh, your array is going to be an object array. R uh, characters. It's called characters equals R dot to array. And then you can print your array using the method called to string from the arrays class and you're going to see the same characters in an array. Now let's look at linked hash sets. Linked hash set is a class that extends the hash set class and that provides an ordering of the elements. So you know that in hash sets we don't have any order. So the, the, the order in which you add the elements is, is not preserved. Uh, we have seen this example previously, but linked hash, set, hash sets preserve that order. This is the documentation for the linked hash set. Uh, you can see that the linked hash set is the subclass of the hash set uh, class and if we look at the uh, constructors there are four constructors very similar to hash sets and these these are the list of methods and this list is the same for for the hash sets as well but they have a uh, kind of a different implementation all right uh, so let's look at an example we have uh, three strings, cat, dog, and apple. We're going to create uh, linked hash sets of characters and we're going to add these characters into these sets. So for comparison, let's also create uh, simple hash sets uh, using the same letters. So I'm going to remove this part and this part as well. So uh, R, S, 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 and T, S are going to be hash sets and R, S, T are going to be linked hash sets. So we need to repeat this uh, loop uh, one more time, but for hash sets. So 
So we add the same elements into hash sets and we add the same elements into linked hash sets and let's see, look at the difference. So these are three strings that we want to convert. Uh, we want to put each character of these words into set. Cat, dog and apple. Here p repeats twice. So uh, in order to compare hash sets and linked hash sets I'm going to be uh, putting the same elements in both of the sets at the same time. So first we put into hash sets. Hash sets do not preserve the order of the elements. So first we add C and then A then T but when we display this set itself we can see that the order is not there. For dog as well and for apple as well. But we can see that P doesn't repeat here. If we look at the uh, linked hash set I think I need to change this part R, S and T. We can see that the the elements are added in the same order as uh, we I mean uh, they are stored in the same order as we added them into the set. Cat, dog and apple. But P, well P is not added because it's the it's repeating for the second time. That's the only difference between linked hash sets and hash sets. All the remaining um, methods are exactly the same. Now let's look at tree set and some of the methods in, in, in a tree set. So tree set uh, is a special set that guarantees that the elements in the set are sorted. So whenever you want your elements in the set to be sorted, you're going to use tree set. So we have a string called uh, I love Java and here we're going to add all the characters in this string into a tree set and we know that the characters are stored are compared alphabetically and that's why we expect this set to be like A, E, I and so on and so forth yeah, in, the, in the order. Let's print the set R A E I J L O V, and this is the this is the alphabetical order. All right. So, uh, what what are some of the methods in a tree set? So a tree set has method called first, which just gives you what's the first element in the in the set. So it's A. Also, you can look at what's the last element in the set, which is going to be V. There is also methods called poll first and poll last. And what's the difference between poll first and poll last? Let's actually uh, do the poll first and then poll last. And we're going to see that they both display the same output, but uh, this is on the surface, yeah. Uh, there, there, there is some difference between them. So when your set is empty, first and last are going to throw an exception. You can check this in the documentation. So this is the documentation of the tree set class. Let's go down and let's click on the first. So if there are no if the set is empty it's gonna throw no such element exception. But poll first it's not gonna throw any exception but it removes uh, the first element. So when we do the call the methods poll first and poll last and uh, system out print ln the set we're gonna see that the set changed and there's no A and V uh, characters in there but when we don't do that and use only the first and last they are there okay so that's the difference and the second difference comes when the set is empty let's say there are no elements and we're get, we want to call first and last we, we can see that they're gonna be an exception but when we do poll first and poll last, we're gonna uh, get null and also an empty, an empty set. There are several more methods that are mentioned in the book, which are also in the documentation. They are ceiling, uh, first, uh, ceiling, floor, higher, and lower. These four methods are described here so lower lower returns the element less than the element we want. For example, let's um, system what print ln r lower. So I want 
a letter which is lower than E. And we know that uh, what are the elements that are lower than E? The elements are A, right? So this is the closest element. If we do I, it's going to show us E because it's lower. There is also called a method called floor, which is going to return less than or equal to less than or equal to i is going to be i. And the next method called ceiling, it's the opposite of 4. It's going to return greater than or equal to this element. And we have upper, not upper, sorry, higher, bigger than i, which is j, right? The closest element to i, which is also bigger, is j. Now we're going to be comparing performance of uh, sets and lists. So I have started with some code. So we're going to be dealing with 2 million integer numbers. We're going to store them in an array list and hash, a hash set. I've already added them here. Let's try to compile and run this program. All right. So uh, sets are very efficient when it comes to checking if some certain element is in the set or not. So it takes uh, constant time. For array lists, it's linear time. Also, sets are very efficient when it comes to removing elements from from there. For for example, to, to remove the first element in an array list, it's going to be linear time because there is a shifting operation happening. But in hash set, if you you can remove elements from any position, and it's always going to be constant time operation. So. Let's uh, now start with our performance test. We're going to have a long start and end. Start equals system current time noise. We're going to be using this our old-fashioned way of measuring the performance. So in start and end, what we're going to do, we're going to be uh, checking if some certain element contains in an array list. So for in i equal until n, we're going to check each element um, r that contains i. That's it, okay? And after that, we're going to be um, array list contains. It's going to print us some milliseconds, right? It's going to be like uh, n minus start plus seconds. Let's do the same operation but for the but for the set not array list but set contains and now here we're gonna write set. Let's see how does it work. You can see it's very slow because there are two million elements. Probably it's gonna be very very slow because uh, since 2 million elements in an array list, in the worst case, it's going to be 2 million uh, operations, which is almost quadratic, quadratic time, right? So let's try to decrease the number, not to 2 million, but let's say 200,000, 200, I think, is should be fine. So we decreased it to, by 200, I mean, by, by, by the f um, scale of 10. It means the performance should be 100 times more because it's quadratic. Still, it's very slow because 200,000 multiplied by 200,000 is going to be uh, something with 10 zeros, which is four, 40 billion operations. So let's decrease it by by the factor of um, four, which it means it should be. 100,000 elements and let's start again. Yeah, I think we need to start small. All right. Yeah, the 100,000 elements is perfect. So you can see that the array list works for 10 seconds while set works for only for 9 seconds. It's very very efficient for just looking if some certain element contains in this in some container or not. So in this case we need to use sets. 
Now let's uh, look at the removal part. So here we're going to say, OK, array remove i. Ideally, it would be better if we remove uh, in the in random order, right? Because this time we are removing always from the beginning. And we know that ArrayList doesn't like when we remove elements from the beginning. But still, to amplify the ben benefit of uh, sets, let's just do this uh, now. So we need to uh, right, remove here and remove here. And let's wait for 10 seconds. So we got a problem here. Uh, we have index out of bounds exception. I forgot that when we call remove, we actually remove by the index. So I'm going to um, write a zero. So we remove always from the beginning of the array list. And here we're going to remove by, by uh, I forgot actually. Let's check it. Hash set remove. So it removes only by the object value. So that's fine. We can write i. All right, so this is the result. And you can see that uh, set in both cases, yeah, the second one should be set. In both cases, it shows very good performance, uh, while a realist is very slow in these operations. So knowing which data structure to use is very, very important. All right. Now let's look at maps. So maps are a data structure uh, that stores the, uh, the the data in in a collection of key value pairs. So you can see an example here, an image example here. So you can assume that this vertical is just like a vertical container or an array, and each element in this array or this container is is a pair. Okay, so the left part, the left element of this pair is going to be key, and the right element of this pair is going to be the value. So we have a key value pair, key value pair, key value pair, and a collection of these key value pairs makes up a dictionary. So when these key value pairs or ma when maps are efficient and useful, they are useful when uh, you store elements and you uh, refer to them by not like some index integer index by but by some key of any type all right so in lists the indices are integers all right this is very important in all the lists the indexes are integers but in maps the indexes can be any objects that's the key difference between lists and maps so uh, there are there are uh, three different maps, hash maps, linked hash maps, and tree maps. Uh, all of these three maps are very similar to the sets, hash set, linked hash set, and tree set when it comes to implementation. So in hash map, the, the, the order of the key value pairs that we add is not preserved. So the insertion order is not preserved. In linked hash map, the insertion order is preserved, and in tree map, the elements or the key value pairs of this map are sorted by the order of their keys. So you can see the, the, the relationship here and uh, the, uh, the methods of the uh, map interface. Yeah, uh, the better it's going to be when we analyze, I mean, when we look at the maps uh, using code. All right, so. How do we create maps? So let's create the hash map. Hash map, uh, we need to specify two uh, generic types here. Uh, so let's say the first is going to be string, and the second one is going to be also a string. Uh, info equals new hash map. So this hash map is going to store key value pairs of strings and strings. So how to add elements into this hash map? So the methods to add and to remove are listed here. We're going to refer to this uh, UML diagram from time to time. So clear removes all the elements and put, puts the 
key value pair into the hash map. This is what we need. So let's say info that put. We're going to say that the name of the person is uh, sick. All right. So he, this is his name, and let's say info dot put a university, and this is going to be stu info dot put let's say faculty uh, engineering and natural sciences this is the faculty name that's it this is the hash map now let's uh, try to print the hash map and see can we print it yes we can print it so it displays that the university's SDU name is SEDIC faculty is engineering and natural science so uh, let's say we are telling a story about a person and we can do something like this print f uh, the name of the student is some string this student studies in faculty in percent s and then you line so the first element is going to be the name of the student, which is info, and we want to get the name of the student from this info uh, hash map. We just do get, and we just get the name of the student. And the next one is going to be info get what's the faculty of this of this uh, student, and the next element is going to be what's the university, right? So get university. And it's, that's going to be the story that we tell about this student. Uh, so here I need to put S. All right, let's run again. The name of the student is Cedric. This student that is an engineer in SDU. That's it. That's very simple uh, example of hash maps. Of course, you, there are some other methods you want to use. For example, clear to remove all the key value pairs. You want to check if there is some certain key, if there is some certain value. Uh, if it's empty, you can you want to get all the keys in this um, hash map, and uh, it's called key set because the keys cannot repeat. It's very important. The keys in in hash map in maps do not repeat. Uh, put all like put all the elements from some other map into this hash map. Remove an element by key. Uh, get the size of this hash map or how many key value pairs there are and get all the values of this hash map. The other thing about hash maps uh, is how to traverse, how to write a loop uh, in order to print this, the contents of the hash map. How do we write a loop? So in order to do that, we can get all the keys of the hash map. There are several ways. We can get the key set. So for example, for each string key in info.keyset, so what do we do? We just system out print ln and then do key plus plus info dot get and uh, get the value under this key. This is one way to do it. It's just going to display all the contents of this of this uh, hash map. Uh, we can also display an error here. Okay, the universities is the name is city faculties in general natural sciences. The second way to do it is Let's comment this out. So the second way to do it is by using this uh, set of map entry uh, values. So by using entry set, we're going to say for each map dot entry of string to string, uh, let's say entry, we're going to say info dot uh, entry set. And what do we do with this entry? So this, now actually we can print it. Let's print it. Let's print this entry. It's going to print uh, as if we're doing the same way, right? We also can print the keys and the, uh, the values separately. Get key plus entry dot get value. So these are uh, two different ways 
uh, to print the contents of the hash map. Okay, now let's do an example with the hash maps. So let's say we have uh, lots, lots of books. Okay, so lots of books, book one, book two. I have only two books, but assume that there are many, many books. And you want to store like the words of uh, each book into a container. I mean, you want to get all the all the uh, words from all the books. And how do we do that? And we can use HashMap in order to uh, in order to store the words in these books. So our hash map is going to be from string. The key of this hash map is going to be the name of the book, book one or book two, and then uh, the value of this hash map is going to be the list of words. In this case, it's going to be a real list of strings, right? Because we don't know how many uh, words are in every book. We're going to call this variable book words. Now, how do we fill these um, book words with uh, with uh, with the words? Uh, first of all, let's create an, an array list of strings book names equals new array list. I think I can write here arrays dot as list, right? And write here book one, sorry, and book two. So this is going to be the book name. So let's actually print to make sure that everything is correct. All right, book one and book two. Now we're going to write a loop uh, for each book, uh, each string, book in book names. What we're going to do with each book? Of course, we need to open this book to read it. So we can use just the scanner scanner file in equals new scanner and we're going to be reading uh, uh, using the um, file input stream and here we need to write the, uh, the name of the file which is book plus uh, dot txt we know that this uh, throws an exception so that's why we're just going to declare it here it throws an IO exception so we have a scanner. Now we're going to say while this has next line, what we're going to do with each line. Uh, uh, we need to do something with each line. So for each book, what do we do? First of all, we need to do book words uh, dot dot put we need to put a new value like book and uh, here we need to write new array list because uh, for book one there is no array list of words right so we put it there and after we run this loop what we're gonna do we're gonna say okay book words so we need to get the word right string word equals fin dot next line let's actually print the word system will print the line word we need to see all we should see all the words from all the books I love Java very much I like Java quite a lot alright so that's correct now what do we do with each word we need to add the word of first book into the first uh, key value pair in this hash map so we need to do uh, book words dot get get this book and it's going to return an array list and into this array list we're going to add this word that's it so after this loop we're going to have our book words filled with all the words that we have uh, that we have in these books so system of print on book words let's see the contents and we can see that book 2 contains I like Java quite a lot and book 1 contains I love Java very much and if we have like 100 books the, this loop is gonna work the same way for any number of books we just need to put all the book names in this array list 
all right so this completes uh, the video lecture for hash maps so we've come to the last uh, subtopic in our video lecture which is about singletons and unmodifiable collections and maps these uh, these uh, singleton unmodifiable collection uh, these are the these are the methods which are available in collections class. These are static methods. Uh, singleton returns uh, a set that contains only one object. Singleton list that contain singleton list returns a list that contains one object. Singleton map contains a map which contains one key value pair. So uh, uh, where you would use this singleton depends on your particular. Uh, objectives and uh, goals it just uh, it's very I mean it's uh, it's the set and it's this is the list and this is the map but with limitation with limitation and the guarantee that into this set you can't add more elements and you can't remove this element you're guaranteed to have exactly one element in this set you're guaranteed to have exactly one element in this list and you have you are guaranteed that to have exactly one element in this map that's the guarantee and this uh, set list and map are not uh, modifiable. It means uh, you can't change them. So the next ones are unmodifiable collection, list, map, set, sorted map, and sorted set. These are the methods that return unmodifiable collections or maps. Unmodifiable means you can't change them or read only. So whenever you want your collections to be uh, read only or you want you don't want your uh, some in some other part of your program to change the mistake by mistake or uh, you want you don't want other people to change your collection by mistake in this case you uh, you should use unmodifiable lists or maps so trying to change immutable data structures or read only views are it's going to result in a unsupported operation exception. Alright guys, I hope you learned uh, a great deal of about uh, sets and maps. So uh, the homework for this uh, lecture, video lecture, is going to be this. Let me show it to you. So it's a JavaFX application where you have we have like three sets A, B, and C. I'm not going to tell you anything about implementation details. It's just three sets. Every time I click on a pane, uh, it's going to do something. When I click inside A, yeah, inside this region, it's going to draw this circle with a random color and uh, write one. And at the same time, on the console, it's going to show me the contents of each set. So set A, set B, set C, and their intersection A, intersection B, intersection C. So let's put one here in the middle. So it's going to be one, two, two, two. Yeah, two is in the intersection. Three is going to be only in A and B. Uh, four is going to be only in C. And five is going to be only between uh, B and C, only in B and C. So we can see that everything updates properly. So when I add 6, it's going to be inside all the sets 7, 8, and 9 is going to be only in, in, in A and C. So this is the program. Each time I click the circle, uh, I, each time I click, uh, the counter should increment by showing uh, like the numbers for each small uh, circle I'm adding. Also, the colors should be random colors and um, and also it should show me uh, it should show on the console the contents of each set i hope the homework is clear thank you guys very much i hope you enjoyed the video lecture see you guys in the next one bye bye